Hey guys, I hope this video finds you doing well. Uh, today, I'm going to show you some slides from our club's ARRL field day for 2021 and kind of give you a description of what went on and, and how we get things set up. Uh, afterwards, I will uh, tell you uh, what went on with my station and all the events that, that happened with it. Here you can see our portable tower set up. That is actually a, I think it's 30 foot of tower. And there's about a 10 foot piece of inch and a half pipe bolted to the top of the tower as well. The trailer originally started its life as a foam dump tank with a gas powered pump on it for one of the local volunteer fire departments uh, they upgraded and i'm not sure how our club came about with the trailer whether it was donated or if it was uh, bought but the entire original trailer was about eight foot long and it had a lot of weight on it because of the the dual axles there now you can see the hand winch on the back end of it with the uh, basically a toe strap that's used to raise and lower the tower up and down and this it served us very well in the years past here is the tribander that we do break down and reassemble every year to install on top of the tower. If you'll notice on each one of the uh, elements as it comes off of the main boom, there are different numbers of black electrical tape wrapped around it, which corresponds with the same number of wraps on the elements. The elements when you match the numbers up slide in up to a coupling that's placed on the element and then that sets the length for the whole element and you tighten the hose clamp down and as you can see the the elements are stored uh, tied in a bundle to the mast and it's put into storage every year here you can see one of our members actually in the middle of the assembly process uh, tightening down the hose clamps and I don't know if you're able to see it or not but between the numbered wraps of electrical tape there is a coupling there and like I said before it just bottoms down on the uh, main boom section and you tighten the hose clamp up and everything is already preset and ready to go here is the rotator and the tribander mounted on top of the 10 foot piece of pipe and everything has been bolted down and secured and we're ready to start raising it the way that we actually have to put this on that is we will lower the tongue of the trailer down so that we can reach it the end of the pipe off the ladder uh, slide the rotator up there tighten the u-bolts on it and then another one member will hold the tribander up and we get it get the pipe coming out of the rotator line with the u-bolts slide it on and tighten it down now here you can see the uh, entire tower raised completely up although it is leaning in this picture we had not uh, actually raise the tongue back up high enough to get the tower uh, straight up and down but we did take care of that here you see the six meter yagi and the two meter yagi that we were using as well this year uh, that's on i think about a a 20 foot tower behind the house of the club member that we was at the metal coming off the right hand side of the tower is holding up an 80 meter dipole 
Now here's the radio that we used on the Tribander. It is a brand new Yesu FT-991A. And I know it was brand new because I was the one that put the lugs on the power cable and hooked it to the power supply. It done an excellent job and I was very impressed. And you can see that it is tuned to 10 meters. So uh, we, we did make several contacts on 10 meters over the course of the afternoon. All right, here is the IC7300 and it's hooked up to the six meter beams. And uh, there was several six meter contacts made over the course of the afternoon as well. On the left hand side, you'll see I think that is a Kenwood TM-281 that looks like it's dialed in to one of the local repeaters, but uh, we did try some some local uh, two-meter contacts, but weren't very successful. And the rotator controller is right there in the middle under a SWR meter next to the power supply. All right. Now that you have seen how we got our club stations assembled and connected and uh, uh, kind of an overall overview of, of how things went, uh, my station was a complete flop. I had planned on running a digital mode QRP with my Yesu FT-818, but I got everything all packed up and was sitting by the chair uh, sitting by the door in the chair as i was going out i was grabbing and loading the trunk up. so what happened was i had my laptop in a bag of a very similar color to the chair and as, as I was grabbing things, I just totally left it at home. I mean, I got there and we finished setting up. And I went and got my coax out of the car and I, I rolled it out, pushed it through the window where I was going to be setting up at. Went back, got to looking and there was no laptop sitting there whatsoever. And then it dawned on me where it was at. So I got pretty well disgusted with myself and I went back and I rolled my coax up and told them that I was not going to be setting up a station this year and I would help them operate those. And I did make several contacts on the, the tribander. Uh, most of them was on 10 and 20. But, you know, I, I still was, was, pretty well disgusted all day long and and I some of some of them was going to to stay all night and operate but uh, I was kind of perturbed at my own self for not paying attention to things so I just told them that I was going to go home and when I got home you know boom there it was right there in the chair where I left it at so I got everything put up and <clears throat> Got me a little bit of bite to eat when I got home because it was, it was getting on close to dark. And um, I sat down in here and I fired up my uh, base and I started working uh, FT8 and FT4. And I think in just a short amount of time, I had uh, 12 or 14 contacts just, just very easily right back to back. And uh, I kind of grew tired of that because I was still disgusted about the, the day's events and, and me forgetting that stuff. So I just, I, I logged everything and I uploaded it to QRZ and uh, EQSL, which is the ones that I use. And <clears throat> I started to make a plan of, of what to do. So my plans as of right now is I do have my Yesu FT-818 in a uh, one of the Harbor Freight Pelican style cases. I, like 
I said, I had my laptop in a bag and I have the sales and everything else that I need to build a extended runtime battery for the uh, 818. I have not made the time to complete that build yet, but when I do, I will try to put it on video. Uh, Computer-wise, somewhere around here, I don't know where it's at, I'll have to dig it out, but I do know that I have a 7-inch um, um, LCD screen that you can mount a Raspberry Pi to the back of it comes with a wall wart <clears throat> one plug the powers everything the raspberry pi will actually get its power from the lcd screen and it runs off of 12 volts from the wall wart so i'll take a buck converter and hook it into my extended uh, my, my larger battery and power it off of that as well as the radio and i will have a i think it's a 27 or 30 watt solar panel that i'll use to keep it topped off with now these things will probably be housed in uh, smaller harbor freight pelican style cases uh, just for protection now it will not be a backpackable type uh, setup. It will all be contained in a box where I can pick it up and put it in the trunk of the car or in the back seat and go. Which you know it would once you get set up with uh, that you'll have your antenna. You can you know you operate out of the back seat or or set a chair up and operate out of the trunk. So. You know, that's the type of station that I'm, I'm looking at building. I uh, just got the Buddy Stick Deluxe. Uh, got a, I have got to do a, a video on it. I have some in, um, during field day, but with the circumstances that went, come, came about, so I just decided not to. So, But for the Raspberry Pi, I did order a brand new, raspberry pi 3b plus which is the uh, most energy efficient model of them all and it's more than than capable of running um like gs8 call and uh, wsjtx and fl digi uh, you know worst comes to worst you can open up uh, fl digi and use it as a logger but so far, that's uh, that's the plans based on uh, my failure for a field day, and you know, it's like my wife said, camo works. It just doesn't have to be green. All the colors just need to match. Uh, I hope you got something out of the video today, and uh, I enjoyed making it. So, you know. Keep watching. We'll we'll get some more out as we can. Uh, seven three. See you on the next one.